Hello everyone, Supervin47 here and I'm bringing you a new series called Multiplayer Mondays. In this series, I will be showing you different multiplayer games that I feel deserve a lot more attention than they have right now and a lot more players so it will be more fun for everyone in general. The first game I'll be showing you is Guns of Icarus Online developed by Muse Games, released sometime in summer of 2012 I believe. It is based off of the original Guns of Icarus also released by and developed by Muse Games that was released sometime back in 2005. You can currently get Guns of Icarus uh, and Guns of Icarus Online on Steam right now for the prices of $5 and $20 respectively. Um, Guns of Icarus Online when it goes on sale will drop down roughly 50% to about $10. What is Guns of Icarus Online? It is a steampunk aerial combat game. The, the game is set so that you have two teams, Team Red and Team Blue, going against each other with a set of different ships. Each ship has a crew of four, uh, four players. So let's take a look at the ships. Here you have the biggest ship in the map currently, but it's also the slowest. The Galleon, which has a whole lot of health and can take a lot of, uh, a lot of punishment, moves very slowly but but sports the heaviest armament of the game being able to support four heavy uh, heavy class weaponry now about the weaponry there are two classes you have the light guns which are very they're fast shooting they don't do as much damage as the heavier guns but you can but they're a lot more maneuverable uh, you have guns like the kidna flat cannon the Dragon Tongue Flamethrower, and the Barking Dog. Each gun in this game has its specific use and can be used to effectively cripple a ship. Uh, for example, the Flamethrower. A lot of people kind of, well, a lot of inexperienced players laugh at the Flamethrower because it does very little damage and has a very short range. But its main, um, its main source of strength, its main advantage, is that when you use the flamethrower, you can set other weapons on fire. When you set other weapons on fire, they become unusable. You're basically crippling a ship's defenses, which is very, very useful. And then you have guns like the Barking Dog. The Barking Dog fires flechettes. Flechettes are basically sharp pieces of metal, and what the Barking Dog can uh, enables you to do it's to target a balloon, because that's how ships gain ed elevation in this game. So you use the Barking Dog to take out the ship's balloon, it's grounded. And as soon as it, it's grounded, it hits the ground and starts taking damage from the ground. As well as you being able to swing around and pummel it from afar. Now, in terms of heavy weaponry, you have guns like the, he the Typhon Heavy Flak Cannon. This is a medium range cannon, it shoots very slowly. You know, it may look like 140 rounds per minute is fast, it is not. It actually, well, it shoots slower relative to other guns. Because there's a lot of lead time in between uh, each round being fired, but it does a fair amount of damage. Then you have the guns like the Manicore Heavy Huacha. Uh, some players look down on the Manicore because of its widespread damage and it's very and each individual round does very little damage but what it's supposed to be used for is what it says powerful area of denial effect the ships in guns of Icarus online for the most part move very predictably and you can normally track their movement and fire ahead of them that's how you play the game. That's how you're supposed to hit them, because everything follows physics. So what the Mana Core enables you to do is set up a whole spread area of denial. Basically, you're forcing the ship to fly through your barrage and take even more damage. You know, that's I, I feel that some players don't get that, and they try to aim directly at the ship. And by the time your projectile hits where the ship used to be, it's already moved past and you're missing everything. Then you have the Hellhound Bar Heavy Twin Carronade. It's basically like the Barking Dog, except it does a lot more damage. 
it takes down a balloon in about two to three rounds flat. Whereas the barking dog would require six rounds, eight rounds, however many rounds. The lumberjack heavy motor is actually a new gun. I've never used it before, but I'm assuming it is what it says it is. It's heavy motor. It has a huge arcing effect, does a lot of damage when it hits. Uh, it says here it has area of effect flechettes. So I'm assuming you're aiming for the balloon. And yes, high arcing weapon with balloon damaging flechettes. So those are the weapons, let's get back to the ships. Hill, the Galleon, obviously takes a lot of damage. On the inverse, you have ships like this, the Squid. Squid takes very little damage to take it down. However, in exchange for that, you have a lot of speed. Fast acceleration, fast turning, radial acceleration, allows you to turn left or right, vertical acceleration, up or down, and standard acceleration forward and backwards. Max speed of 46.8 meters per second, this is currently the fastest ship in this game. And in exchange for that, you have lighter armaments. See? Three weapons. Um, one at the stern, one at the bow, and one at the side. These three weapons are all light so you can outfit them however you like. The main advantage to a fast moving ship like the Squid is you're able to move in and out, able to quickly position yourself in a, from an angle to which, har to which to harass heavier ships that may not be able to move as fast as you can. And then of course you have a variety of uh, in the middle kind of ships. The Beluga is more along the lines of the Galleon. It moves slow, but it has a whole lot of weapons that can fire from the side. I mean, the Beluga, the Junker. Sorry. Uh, one of the thing, one of the key features about this game that I like is that you can customize your ships, including their names. So, you know, I just named these ships whatever. Um, Goldfish is c the Goldfish and the Spire are unique in that they're the only light. Uh, light class ships that can sport a heavy weapon as you can see here the Typhon flak cannon and for the goldfish I have another Typhon flak cannon now these are fast moving ships with a pretty high radial yeah pretty high radial acceleration they can turn quickly and they can fire front ends these do not have side cannons so they rely on maneuverability and speed to take to smack down a huge punch. Uh, yeah, let's just go through the roles. Now, as I said before, there are four players to a ship. There are three roles. There is the pilot, the engineer, and the gunner. As you notice, it's not actually your role dictates the amount of equipment you can carry for each section. Pilot has the most piloting equipment. These are only usable when you're at the wheel. You have things like impact bumpers that allow you to take more damage, but they reduce engine output. Um, you have kerosene, which increases maximum ship speed, but you take damage to your engines. And tar barrels, which set up a smoke cloud, but they also damage your, weapon, your engines. Like Most of the piloting equipment comes with a drawback just because it allows you to push your ships past normal boundaries. As for engineers, you have things such as uh, spanners for repairing equipment that constantly breaks down. Like if you're taking damage, your guns will be destroyed, your hull will be damaged, your balloon might even go down and you're going to have to repair it. Or in the event of someone having a flamethrower, you're going to need the fire extinguisher to put out those fires, because otherwise, you can't use those things. Rubber mallet is just another different kind of repair. Uh, this is more for if the ship is just damaged instead of being broken. It's not good for fixing broken guns, uh, broken, broken parts, sorry. And then you have the gunner. The gunner, it is what it says it is. You sit in the gun, you can switch between the different rounds. The rounds I have right here are just a short, small example. The heatsink clip prevents your guns from being ignited on fire. This is more often than not a must when facing other ships. 
Like, every gunner should have a heatsink clip on to hand, just in case the enemy ship comes in close with flamethrowers, your guns become useless, you have to turn tail and run, and you're getting peppered at while you're running away. Uh, charge rounds increase damage, but slow down the rate of fire and give you a smaller clip size. Heavy clips, because of the way the guns on this game work, every bullet fo follows an arc. Now, if your opponent is particularly below you or particularly close and you don't like heavy arcing guns, you can put on the heavy clip to make your bullets fall down faster. And there are, and it reduces recoil obviously to keep that arcing effect from going crazy. And you, you can also change the aesthetics of your character, hat, goggles, bodyguard, if you go to the store and buy some costumes. Uh, you can have the steampunk samurai style costumes. Uh, I actually have no idea what this is. Uh, you can have admiralty costume with uh, some steampunk gauntlets. Very posh top hat. But of course you have to buy all these, so uh, I'm not going to buy them. Don't need to. Alright, so let's take you into a game and show you some perspectives. Okay guys, so I got into a game. I'm currently playing as an engineer aboard a Spire. Now if you guys saw from the blueprints earlier, the Spire is that seahorse looking kind of thing. Uh, here I am showing you the main cockpit where the balloon is, and it has two front guns, the Gatling right now, and the flamethrower. Now I'm heading down to show you the main guns and my duties as an engineer. As an engineer, I have to keep this plane running at all times. That means fixing the engine, fixing the hull, which you see right there, and maintaining the weapons so that we don't get attacked. Speaking of getting attacked, Apparently there's an enemy goldfish that wants a piece of us. So while that AI is manning that gun, I will man the main gun here. And immediately we're taking damage, the hull is broken, I have to fix that. Things escalate very very quickly when, and now it's on fire, which is also bad, and it's broken. So as you can see, things escalate very very quickly when you're an engineer. Which is why normally most ships have two of them. The normal layout for a ship is two engineers and one gunner and one pilot, obviously. Two engineers are needed because things go to hell very, very quickly. And just the fact that I have to run back and forth between the engines, the hull, the guns, the balloon, it gets very crazy. And if you do a misstep, if you spend too long on one thing, you die. You lose the ship. Now, one of the interesting things about Guns of, In Guns of Icarus is you have two individual chat channels. Oh, that's on fire. Let's put that out real quick. Come on, come on, get out. There we go. Now, but before I continue on that thought, see what happens when you get hit with a flamethrower? Everything gets lit on fire. The engine's broken, the balloon's on fire, the other engine's on fire, the guns are on fire. We can't shoot back, we can't move, so things went to hell very, very quickly. Now, back to the earlier thought. One of the very good, interesting things about Guns of Icarus is that you have two chat channels. You have one channel that is crew specific, you can only talk to your own boat, and one that is captain specific, allowing the captains to coordinate between the multiple ships and launch an effective counterattack. But that's for that's for when I get to the captain in the next segment. As you can see, I'm kind of running around like that's broken. I have to run up there to fix that. No, oh, no, we're suddenly under attack, and that's it. I think we just need one more kill. Death matches in this game normally run to five kills, and the matches will go on. There's no timer. One of the things I don't like about this game is that there's no timer. Uh, speaking of no time, we're coming up to the end of this segment as an engineer. So I will see you guys in the next video where I showcase the pilot and gunner aspects of this game, which are also damn fun.